from the Islamic perspective, for something to be seen as authoritative, coming from the Prophet, yeah, or coming from the companions of the Prophet, two, five conditions have to be met. Not five conditions in general, but five conditions of the person who's making the claim that it came from those individuals. So we have a lot of like hadith, right? We have a lot of hadith. In fact, probably over a million. Yeah, over a million hadith. But of the million, according to a Nawawi, one of the great hadith scholars, only about 10,000, can you imagine that? 10,000 are seen as authentic. That's like 1% or something like that. Do you know why? Because a lot of those hadiths, a lot of those um, uh, reports claimed to be from the Prophet are rejected outright. Do you know why? Because we don't know where they came from. So what I'm saying is that the way we deal with our, this is our evidentiary bar. It's a little bit higher than yours, in my opinion. Because what we're saying is this, is that when we see a scripture or a parchment or someone makes a narration, orally narration, yeah, that the Prophet said this or this companion said that, we say that's not good enough. What you need to do is tell us your chain of narration. And in your chain of narration, the five following things have to be met. Number one, the person who's narrating the hadith has to be trustworthy. In other words, they're not a criminal, they don't have a criminal record. Because if you're a criminal or you have some kind of allegiance, you're likely to fabricate a hadith in order to suit your agenda. So if you're known in the community for someone who has these kinds of biases, and especially if you're caught in the hadith on the topic which you're likely to want to have a bias in, your hadith will not be accepted. Okay. Number one. Number two is that person has to be dubbed. That which means that, that they have to have a good memory in the case of those who are already transmitting it and or good written ability for the ones who are writing it in manuscripts. Number three, it has to be free from shudud, which means defects. They can't be defects, they can't be anomalous things that the Prophet is, or the language is different or something that doesn't befit a 7th century setting. And it has to be muttasil, which means that everybody in the chain of narration had to have, been able, had to have met one another, been from the same place, from the same locality. So these are the five yeah, principles. Can I, can I ask a question about something? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. I'm wrong But when you, let's say, switch to the, the Sirah, is it Sirah, the biography of the Prophet? Yeah. You don't have that, do you? You have a long gap yeah, from so, the event. So, so a lot of the Sirah... Would you hold to the Sirah then? Yeah, so the Sirah, a lot of it, yeah. we, wouldn't, we would see it as, as good as the Bible. In the sense that... Do you, do you see, we, what I'm saying to you, bro, is... You know the attitude that we have against, uh, uh, towards the Bible? is the same attitude we have towards the weak hadith, bro. Do you understand that? It's not like, yeah. if we knew what Moses and Jesus said, and it had a chain of narration and so on, we would accept it. Yeah. But because we don't have such chain of narration, if, if there's a hadith that someone says has come from the Prophet, but it doesn't have those five criteria, and the people didn't meet each other, we'd say, look, he could have said it. Do you know what the Prophet told us to say about the Bible and those people like you? He says, let us let us Don't affirm what they're saying and don't belie what they're saying. In other words, saying agnostic, like if you're telling me there's certain things in the Bible that this is what Jesus said, I'm going to say it's possible that Jesus said it, but I can't tell you with all certainty that he did. Yeah, but remember, remember what I was saying that... Do you see the point? Yeah, uh, I do see the point. But my issue is that I would assume the principle of testimony, what I was saying is that if I don't have any reason to doubt that person's testimony, yeah. why should I doubt it? Like yeah, that, yeah, so good. So you'll assume that person to be telling you something that's yeah, true. Yeah, so we have it more, unless you have reason. So to we have science. Look, yeah. we have scientific methods of harmonizing this this process which you're talking about. We agree with that point. That that sentiment is fine. But what we would say in terms of how do we come to the conclusion? There must be something more scientific. And so what we're saying is that these five principles, in addition to when it comes to the Quran, you have like additional premises, uh, additional things because the Quran is even more rigorous so with the Quran there's other conditions that have to be met you know it has to be in line with certain uh, scripts and it has to be in line with the Arabic language and it has to have that same ch ch uh, chain of narration yeah which includes those five yeah. things that we talked about with the, with that all in mind what we say is that like the Bible when we look at it we say because it doesn't have that the evidentiary bar is lower for you I understand ours is a bit higher what we're saying is that we can be a bit more sure, rest assured, that this is actually what the Prophet is saying. Okay, I, would disagree. I, I agree with you, quite a lot of what you said, but I would disagree with you in saying, yeah. I wouldn't say the evidentiary bar is low, I would just say it's different. it's different. You would say you look for different evidence when you're trying to yes. um, validate this to be a, a correct text. We would say that we look at actually different evidence from you as well. So it's not that they're lower, it's just that we'll work on different frameworks. You're yeah. working on one framework Fine. and you say but, that but, this is the way to look for it. Yeah, but, and then, so the argument will yeah. be which frameworks are better. My question to you is simple. If you add those principles that we've just talked about, 
Do you, how much of the New Testament do you think would survive? I would say for you to utilize your framework, yeah. probably it wouldn't pass the test that you're saying. Yeah. I'll agree with you on that.